I figure it's about time somebody made a video on how to actually unlock these Class 2 Theft Lock RDS GM radios. I finally figured it out after spending days of gathering information and reading form site after form site on the internet of how to do this. There's another guy on YouTube who, dis who displays a radio on his bench working. Just like that one over there. But he refuses to tell how he did and he refuses to make a video on how to do it. I even went as far as to send him a message asking him for information which he never replied so to heck with him. I'll make my own video since I figured it out on my own. We don't need his help. We don't need his help at all. We got this figured out. Now there's two types of these radios. Obviously like this one. This one has a cassette deck in it but that doesn't matter. In these you'll have to remove the cassette player to get at the chip. You're going to be removing an double EEPROM chip in these radios to unlock them. There will be some side effects, I'll try and cover that. Now, these are the, these are the two versions of the radios I'm discussing. Now, this is the kind of gives you a look up here from up high. If you look carefully, there's a distinct difference between both boards. Same type of radio, just C, just AM, FM, CD, RDS. Nothing else. This is the newer style, this is the older style. Cover the older style since this is going to be more common. The chip you want to remove, it's back here, right here. A lot of people say remove pin 8. You can just remove the chip entirely. It's easier just to remove the chip entirely. I didn't do a very graceful job of removing it, but I didn't damage the board or the radio. Get a good look at it there, a little autofocus. You can see I scuffed the board up. This was my first attempt at it. I got a little better at it later. But I just, all I did was remove the chip. If you want to be picky and want to remove this little board here with the control knob for the front on it off, remove out the wires, you can do a j good job and clean off the solder and make sure the board's clean, but it doesn't really care. The radio will still work. That's the first version. There we go. Now, here's the second version. There's another video on YouTube of a guy with a pickup truck displaying on how to do it on this radio. The chip is right there. This one's easy to get at. You just take a pair of pliers, get it from either side, and then just pull it off. Of course, you'll want to be gentle. This one came off a lot cleaner. Focus in there on it. Best I can. I'm doing this with my iPhone. You can see where the chip has been removed. Right here. Pretty much the same for these. It's pretty much the same for the Pontiac and the Chevrolet. These came out of Chevrolets. This one came out of an Impala. And this one came out of a Monte Carlo. And that one, oh, oh no, excuse me. This one came out of a Malibu. That one came out of an Impala. As you can see, that one's much higher, and it it's playing a tape right now. Obviously, how many people still have cassette tapes? Not many. Now, the adverse effect, you're going you're gonna to get a couple adverse effects with this modification. First off, um, depending on the vehicle, I've heard mixed information on this, but I've, I've noticed it on mine here, this one, that when you take power away from the radio, it forgets its presets. It'll just default back to the presets it came with from the factory. It just forgets them. I've heard it'll do that in the car, too. And that could be a wiring thing, because I did have to change the wiring pigtail that I power that with to make it work. The, the knob's just missing. I picked these up I picked these up from a scrapyard. They were pretty cheap. It was, it was either I buy them and figure this out or they were just going to end up with the car and the crusher. So I figured I'd save them and hey they work. Don't know what I'm going to do with them now. Now just as a demonstration that there's no funny business because some of the other people on eBay have actually the car's BCM which is what this radio looks for behind it. Nothing. And you can see the communication plug is completely unhooked. Now, what you need to do here, I found on my plug. Focus in again. Hate having to do that manually. I need a I need a real camera for this. This yellow wire here. See the little square slots in there? It was one slot over. You need to move it directly next to the thick orange wire. And then these need to be tied together to power for the radio to work. None of the other wires are important. Those will power it. And obviously you need to connect the negative. 
that's to show that there's no funny business. Now, there is a way to temporarily turn these radios on, as that one guy with his own little MC rap CD, which was kind of cute, actually, displayed with one of these radios. If you press preset 5, seek forward, you push them together, and you push the power button, the radio will operate for approximately 10 minutes, locked or unlocked, with the chip or without the chip. The radio will only work for 10 minutes. And then it'll turn back off, and you can only do that process to the radio 10 times before the radio permanently locks. Now, to get rid of that, you have to just... Easy peasy, you just unhook the power to the radio, then hook it back up, and you can do it 10 more times, but obviously that would get vastly, vastly irritating. Another problem I found with this radio especially, when you first power the radio on, the display is going to be normal brightness, and it'll come on. Then after a couple seconds, it'll display Cal ERR, which means error, which is just a calibration error. That's what that means, because that chip is gone, and then it'll work. Now, if the radio is like this one, it has a tape deck. This icon here, this is a tape, will be that won't be there. But on these models here, without the cassette, the radio will always have the tape icon on. It's just one of the side effects of the process. It thinks there's a tape in it. It'll never acknowledge it. Even this one, this one sometimes will even say tape, like this right here, where it's showing tape, and then it's playing the tape down that, in that direction. It'll display that for three seconds, and then it'll go away. That's how you unlock it to make these radios work on a bench, in your car, in any car you want. Whatever you want to do with these radios, they'll work like a normal radio. Just to review, the newer models, the chip you want to remove is here. The eight-leg chip is here. This is looking at the back of the radio forward. This chip here. I hope that helps somebody. Since nobody wants to seem to share the information, I thought I would. So there. Beat that.